Hey, 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 time for another Out of This World story from our space. It was just a kiss. How trustworthy is she after that? My wife of 13 years went on a weekend road trip to another city. Staying indoors for the length of the pandemic has been hard on our family. We have a six-year-old. We went to a log cabin in February, but given my work commitments, I decided not to book another trip so soon. So she wanted to get out of the house by herself. On the agenda for her trip, she planned to meet a friend who she dated in high school, but I thought nothing of this because I came to know him too and did not think they had anything going anymore. We have met this person at social events a handful of times during our marriage. When she came back, she acted strangely. She was very uncomfortable with my physical touch. Later that night, she told me that she kissed someone in this other city. I asked if it was the ex-boyfriend and she said yes. This was devastating for me because it broke the trust in our relationship. The next day, she told me that I needed to accept we are getting a divorce. She went completely cold. She told me things like, the last time we had sex, I felt nothing. She said her feelings for me were dying for a long time, but on her road trip, she had an epiphany and they were completely dead. She even went on a long diatribe of all the personality quirks she hates of me. What I'm so shocked by is how a person's personality could abruptly change from love to extreme anger and hate. Just weeks earlier, she would make nice compliments about how sexy I am. Untrustworthiness is the exact opposite of what I thought of her before this. Since coming back from that trip a little over a week ago, her mood has improved to be polite, but she has pushed away all attempts at physical touch except for an occasional hug. This is weird since before the trip, we often hugged and kissed each other. The story of what this kiss was changed several times. She said that it was brief and she stopped because she felt it was a mistake. In one version of the story, it was at the beginning of the trip when they first met at a coffee shop. She said she was just so excited to see someone after being so isolated in the pandemic that she got wrapped up in the moment. That doesn't make sense to me because neither of them are fully vaccinated and she spent the whole last year being afraid of getting near anyone or even using a public restroom. In another version of the story, the kiss was at the end of the trip before she left. Even before the pandemic, she struggled to be happy in our marriage. Certain negative events with our careers, money, and family health have been stressors. I could tell she's been depressed. I've had trouble giving her the intimacy she needs because I'm struggling with extreme stress myself. What do you think is going on here? I'm trying to make sense of what she might be thinking. I am now doubting a lot of things I thought I knew about her and what we had together. We will get divorced, but if she ever wants to have an intimate relationship with me again, what is likely to be her motivation of how this will play out if I accept her into my life again? Okay, let's hear some comments, shall we? Cranach says, Sounds to me like there was already a lot of communication between them before she left for the trip. Probably even an emotional affair. I mean, how likely is it that she goes on that trip and accidentally meets that guy? No, that was planned. The whole trip was probably for the sole reason to meet him. She was already leaving you in her mind before she left, but was unsure if the other guy was worth it. When she met then with him, she knew that this was more than just an emotional affair for her, and it turned physical. There was guaranteed more than kissing. It probably was a whole week of meeting him and finding out if he would want more. When she was unsure, she returned and started the divorce talk. Tell her that you are looking forward to being divorced from her, so that you can look for a partner that you can trust and that is not a cheater or wants to monkey branch into a new relationship, without a thought of caring about her marriage or how this might affect her child. Be completely indifferent to her. Do you really want to be with that woman again that you can't trust and just showed you what she is capable of? The OP's response, What's so damaging to me about this is wondering how I can trust anyone after this. I put all my trust in this woman and she betrayed me like this. I don't trust myself now that I won't fall for another manipulative partner like this. Granach responds again, What happened here will cause you to approach trust in the future differently. Until this, you are able to enter a relationship and give that person your trust. From now on, you will be more careful with who you give your trust to. It will take more time for you to trust someone, but you will trust again. Figure out for yourself what kind of behaviors make it difficult for you to trust someone and which will make it more easy for you to trust someone, and talking about that with your future partners is key when it comes to building that trust again. For your soon-to-be ex-wife, she has showed you what she is capable of, and that took care of that. You will never trust her again like you did before she cheated on you. There would always be this nagging thought in the back of your mind telling you that she is cheating again. But with a new partner, that could be avoided since she never betrayed your trust like that. 
But wait, there's an update. She warned of the affair months in advance. Could I have stopped this by working at our relationship harder? Maybe I already innately know the answer to this, but it would feel good to have your support and critical feedback. Some months before my soon-to-be ex-wife went on her weekend road trip and came back a changed person, she disclosed to me feelings that she thought about having an affair. We had a dead bedroom that was getting deader, and I was to blame. She complained about not getting regular, frequent sex, but making threatening statements like that made me even more afraid of it, and we ended up having even less sex after that disclosure. Since this happened, I've been beating myself up for not giving her better sex. In the early days of our relationship, sex was great and plentiful. After we had a child, I just became downright afraid of it. During her pregnancy, I dealt with a horribly long period of unemployment that was the most stressful event of my life. Nobody in my life was there to provide help or emotional support. My wife angrily blamed me for not doing enough for her. In particular, she never forgave me for a brief period of time I left the hospital after the baby was out because during the birth I was awake for 40 hours with no sleep and went home to get a very brief rest. She says my abandonment during that time was the worst few hours of her life. Throughout the marriage, I felt like an accessory for my wife and her family to use for offloading responsibility. I had horrible fears about how her and her family would treat me if she ever became pregnant again. She did not use hormonal birth control, so every cycle felt like a game of roulette, even with condoms. Aside from that, her constant nagging and complaining about wanting a more grand lifestyle just made me feel high strung all the time. When this pandemic hit and I was the only person working, she continued to make demands for luxury items and novel date ideas, and my libido just plummeted. She became vocal about my avoidance of sex. This only made the stakes feel higher, and I just couldn't get aroused with all the grave consequences attached to sex. I am really doubting myself. I realize I can only share one side of the story, and I know in her mind I brought this on myself because I rejected her advances for sex many times. I'm only asking because I'm still figuring out what my life views should be for any future relationships. I feel even shamed by our marriage counselor for the collapse of this marriage being my fault because my fears and rejections were psychologically damaging to my wife's self-confidence. What do you all think of this? Be as harsh and critical as you feel necessary. I'm just trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces of this and continue living. Also, both of my parents are dead and I have no extended family. I've lost touch with most of my friends during the marriage. There is no one I can count on. I am completely alone. Our first comment comes from Cranach. So she wanted to have more sex with you while she, at the same time, only criticized you, blamed you, and treated you like an a-hole. You know that it doesn't work that way, right? To be honest, I don't think that there was ever a chance to save this marriage, according to how you describe it. Sexual desire is born out of feeling safe and appreciated in a relationship. What she did caused a lot of things in you, but surely not to feel safe and appreciated. Alone, her statement that she will cheat on you if you don't improve your sex life is such a huge red flag. What did she expect? That a threat makes you desire her more? According to what you wrote, you should be really happy that she is no longer your problem. The OP responds, I can't describe the feelings of relief I have knowing we're near the end of this. Still the divorce battle to go through, but the nagging is done. Yes, the dead bedroom was a direct result of just the endless stream of complaints and threats. I did not want to be intimate with someone who treats me this way. So many times I wanted to kick her out of my life but attempted working it out because we have a kid. In my other post, some of you shared with me materials on narcissistic abuse and now I'm marking so many of the checkboxes talked about in these videos. Rose City 80 says, It sounds like she didn't put a lot of effort at all into the couple's counseling, which speaks to how much interest she has in working on the relationship. And contraception is something both parties need to be on the same page about. As a woman, I also hate hormonal birth control, but there are non-hormonal contraception options that both men and women can utilize. IUD, vasectomy, tubal ligation, condoms, etc. Good sex happens when both parties feel safe about things like contraception, boundaries, etc. and not before. It sounds like there were lots of things not communicated clearly between the two of you, but from your description of events, i.e. the counseling non-attendance, it doesn't sound like she was invested in communicating clearly. And as many people pointed out, Cheating on your partner is a choice, not an inevitable result. I think that you can reflect on ways that you'd like to communicate differently in the future should issues like these arise in future relationships, but I wouldn't take on 100% ownership of the end of the relationship by any means. She sounds like someone who didn't make an effort to communicate clearly, who didn't approach problems in a relationship from a problem solving or inquiry approach and co-own the relationship, and instead blamed and shamed you. 
And then, the threat of infidelity and final act at the end were not mature ways to end a relationship. I'm sorry for the pain and stress this is causing you. You know that with time, you will get perspective and healing down the road. Best wishes. The OP closes us out with, She had an IUD for a while, but removed it because she was afraid of blood clots. I supported that idea because I care about her health too. The condoms were kind of awkward. There are disadvantages to all birth control, and there has to be a compromise or something. It sucks. All of the world uncertainty in 2020 contributed to my anxiety of birth control failure. I'm having a hard time not second guessing my choices, which is why I'm posting here. I keep beating myself up with the fantasy that if I did something different today, I would be all happy and great with her. Thanks for saying this. It's one of those things that is difficult to get myself to believe in the moment. I have to remind myself that her choice to go nuclear with this was hers and probably would have happened if not now, another later time. <laughs>